The Kremlin has said that Wagner leader Yevgeny Prigozhin would be banished to Belarus and will not be held accountable for his group's abortive coup against Vladimir Putin. This follows his startling command for his soldiers to turn back from their march on Moscow. According to Dmitry Peskov, a spokesperson for the Kremlin, the allegations of a coup against the mercenary head have been dismissed. He also said that despite the embarrassing issue, there would be no change in Russia's military leadership. While the fighters who did not take part in the rebellion will sign contracts with the Ministry of Defense, Moscow said that Prigozhin's troops will not be punished in an obvious effort to permanently reduce the power of the dreaded combat force. The purpose of the agreement with Wagner was to avoid bloodshed, internal conflict, and clashes with unpredictable results, according to Peskov. After a meeting between Prigozhin and Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, an audio message on Prigozhin's telegram stream stated, We are turning our columns around and going back to field camps. Even though his forces were just 200 kilometers 120 miles from Moscow, Prigozhin declared that he had decided to send them back in order to prevent shedding Russian blood. Alexander Lukashenko, the president of Belarus, claimed to have reached an agreement with Prigozhin, although it is still unclear what was provided in exchange for the Wagner bosses' consent to stand his troops down. According to Lukashenko's administration, Prigozhin accepted his offer to stop the Wagner Group's advance and take other measures to defuse the situation, and the proposed agreement includes security assurances for Wagner forces. Nothing further was provided. Video appeared to show him making a dramatic leave from Rostov in a vehicle, with people lining up to say goodbye. It was stated that parts of the audience cheered for the deposed military leader, and one guy even appeared to run to shake his hand. Following their earlier seizure of military headquarters and residential structures in the southern city of Rostov-on-Don, Wagner forces many of whom are still rumored to be unhappy about Prigozhin's retreat were later observed fleeing the area. Ukraine said that the Wagner head had humiliated President Vladimir Putin with his foiled insurrection, obviously taking pleasure in the internal commotion in the Russian Federation. According to Mikhailo Podolyak, an assistant to Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky, Prigozhin humiliated Putin slash the state and showed that there is no longer a monopoly on violence. The attempted takeover, according to the President of Ukraine, made Russia appear weak and shown that Putin would destroy himself. Today, the world witnessed that the Russian oligarchs have no power over anything. Absolutely nothing. Absolute disarray. Absolutely no predictability at all. Russia has traditionally utilized propaganda to cover up its incompetence and the foolishness of its leadership. And the anarchy right now is so great that no falsehood can cover it. And the more turmoil, suffering, and issues Russia causes for itself later, the longer it keeps its troops and mercenaries on our soil. Every person who follows the road of evil ultimately kills himself. Prigogine said in his audio message, We left on June 2023 for the March of Justice. We travelled to Moscow in a day, covering less than 200 kilometres. We have not spilled a drop of our fighters' blood during this time. Now that the time has come for blood to be shed, we turn our columns around and return in the opposite direction to the field camps, in accordance with the plan, realizing all the responsibility for the fact that Russian blood will be shed on one of the sides. 
Following the now disbanded threat, some authorities in Russia said they were removing restrictions on residents. In a city that had been ready for war, an eerie quiet has suddenly taken hold on Moscow streets. By setting up checkpoints with armored vehicles and soldiers on the southern outskirts of the city, the capital had prepared for the arrival of forces from the Wagner Group, a private army commanded by Prigozhin that has been fighting alongside regular Russian troops in Ukraine. The mayor ordered the closure of Red Square and advised drivers to avoid certain areas. Putin had already threatened severe repercussions for those behind the armed insurrection that was organized by his former protege and that saw him withdraw his soldiers from Ukraine, take a crucial military station in southern Russia, and push towards Moscow. Putin had described the uprising as a betrayal and treason in a statement made to the country on television. Putin stated that all those who planned the rebellion will face an inevitable punishment. The required directives have been given to the military forces and other government organizations. What if any compromises Putin may have made to convince Prigozhin to stop his march were not immediately obvious? If Putin agrees to Prigozhin's demand to remove Shoigu, Prigozhin would come out on top and deal a severe damage to Putin's authority. Putin may offer Prigozhin additional lucrative government contracts similar to those on which he has already earned his riches if he agrees to refrain from pressing the demand. It would be difficult and politically unwise for Putin to retract his accusation of Prigozhin's treachery. According to some analysts, Prigozhin may give in by bringing the Wagner Group under federal control or by moving the force's operations back to Africa, where his mercenaries have been active recently. The military command center at Rostov-on-Don, a city 60 miles nearly 1,000 kilometers south of Moscow that oversees Russian activities in Ukraine, looked to be under the authority of Prigozhin's private army early on Saturday, according to the British Ministry of Defence. Wagner soldiers and equipment were also present in the Lipetsk province, around 360 kilometres to 25 miles south of Moscow, where officials were taking all necessary steps to protect the safety of the population, according to regional governor Igor Artamanov in a telegram message. In Moscow and the surrounding area, authorities established a counter-terrorist regime, increasing security and limiting certain movement. Soldiers place machine guns, sandbags, and checkpoints on the southern fringes. To halt the march, workers dug up portions of the roadways. Before the head of the Wagner private militia said that his soldiers would retreat to avoid violence, Moscow Mayor Sergei Sabianin, a supporter of President Vladimir Putin, had previously declared that a counter-terrorism regime was in place. Yevgeny Prigozhin had declared his desire to remove the army's top officers and restore justice, while Putin had pledged to put an end to the uprising. One Moscow resident, who only supplied his name as Nikolai because he preferred not to reveal his last name, observed the military occupy positions to guard the city. Naturally, it's terrifying. You sit at home worrying about what can occur, he told Reuters. It's upsetting for you and your loved ones, alike. The scope of the events was difficult for some locals to comprehend. It's an extremely difficult and unexpected development. I recently returned from college. Vladimir, a student, stated, I recently finished my last exam, 
and the news was incredibly surprising as I was preparing for the exam last night. I'm not sure how to respond, honestly. I'm still trying to wrap my brain around it. Kalina, a lady, claimed that she believed what was taking place was some sort of provocation. It doesn't scare me at all, she declared. I believe in our president and the people of this country. One individual, who wished to remain unnamed, stated that he believed it was merely political theatre. They might postpone a few events, and I depend on events for my income. I might lose out because of this because I currently have an event going on, he remarked. Otherwise, let them carry on with their politics and business as usual. In light of the circumstances in Russia, the United States declared Thursday evening that it plans to delay the introduction of fresh sanctions against Wagner. According to the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. administration is concerned that by applying further penalties against Wagner, it may appear to be siding with the Russian government. The source quoted the WSJ as stating that Washington doesn't want to look like it's on one side or the other in this situation. The publication said that due to PMC Wagner's actions in Africa, the U.S. State Department planned to slap fresh sanctions against the company on June 2027. The unexpected news comes after a day of total mayhem in Moscow when residents battened down the hatches and prepared for battle as troops established outposts and military vehicles filled the streets. Before the U-turn, 5,000 Wagner soldiers were allegedly making their way towards the city and were expected to make it as far as Lipetsk this evening. Yevgeny Prigozhin, the leader of the Wagner, is estimated to have 25,000 troops in total at his disposal, with an additional 5,000 of them in Rostov-on-Don, a southern city crucial to Russia's conflict in Ukraine that Prigozhin said he had seized control of. The convoy was initially said to be being commanded by Dmitry Etkin, a top Wagner commander and neo-Nazi. According to a source, Wagner's strategy for Moscow included setting a camp in a heavily populated region before the city withdrew. A variety of restrictions were put in place around the Russian capital as a result of a governor's order, and people were advised not to go through Moscow. It follows Prigozhin's midnight military takeover of the Kremlin leaders, which saw the gang seize control of important towns and threaten the president, who referred to them as traitors. Putin previously warned the Russian people in response to the danger from the Wagner group, saying that Prigozhin had stabbed him in the back. Following a lockdown, troops dug in to prepare to protect the city as Moscow went into lockdown. Putin was still working in the Kremlin and had not left Moscow in response to the previous threat, according to a spokeswoman for the Russian president. But this afternoon, two presidential planes were spotted taking off from Moscow and heading towards St. Petersburg. According to reports, they turned off the transponder to stop the path from being tracked. The shocking declaration from Prigozhin comes after his feared 25,000-strong Wagner militia took possession of Rostov-on-Don, a city in southern Russia, on Saturday, declaring that they are ready to die for their march of justice and that they are currently travelling north in a convoy of hundreds of armoured vehicles. On its route to Moscow, the unit just passed through Voronej, the midway point, and is now rapidly nearing Lipetsk while encountering no opposition. Putin made the incorrect decision, according to a statement that was posted on the Wagner Telegram channel on Saturday before Prigozhin's declaration.
the worse it is for him. We'll have a new president soon. Large troop convoys, believed to be Wagner mercenaries, were seen earlier in social media footage leaving Voronezh in the direction of the north. They were also rumoured to be travelling to Volgograd and Krasnodar, two important cities. In response, Russia tightened security in Moscow, gathered soldiers ready to repel the invasion, and urged the military to support President Putin. As Putin contacted close friend and Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko to update him on the situation, all public activities had already been postponed and Monday had already been proclaimed a non-working day. The mayor of Moscow had previously asked residents to avoid travel within the city, citing the difficult nature of the situation and the high alert state of the city's services. In order to minimize risks, Sergei Sabianin also advised locals not to report to work on Monday. It was made public as part of the city's counter terrorist operation declaration. Meanwhile, pro-Putin soldiers on the city's outskirts could be seen fortifying themselves while the now-disbanded Wagner coup advanced on the capital. Russian soldiers were seen setting up their positions near a bridge across the Oka River. Machine guns, grenade launchers, and barrage equipment were used while military helicopters soared above the city. Other images showed military erecting barriers and machine gun nests outside of the city as Putin approved a decree allowing for up to 30 days of detention of anyone in places where martial is in effect, but this has not yet occurred. To slow the convoy down, Russian officials had already issued orders for massive, heavy vehicles to block highways in its path. Additionally, travel had been impeded in areas closest to Moscow, most notably in the Kalugia region. Crowed traffic will be prohibited close to the neighbouring areas of Tula, Bryansk, Oryol, and Smolensk. Additionally, airstrikes were seen by witnesses on the Wagner convoy as it travelled north. Prigozhin said it was targeted by Russian strikes and helicopter fire shortly after this information surfaced. In a telegram post, Prigozhin stated, We were fired upon, first by artillery strikes and then by helicopters. An artillery attack on an armored vehicle during the Wagner march is purportedly captured on video and posted online. Before the unexpected retreat, pictures also showed the Wagner forces in the Lipetsk area, which is less than four hours from Moscow. In response to speculations that ruler Vladimir Putin has fled the capital, Yevgeny Prigozhin's military coup army is moving north in preparation for a battle with forces still loyal to Putin. The Wagner troops were facing a night or evening confrontation with Russian regular forces while they were around 200 kilometers from Moscow. The armed uprising in Russia spearheaded by the Wagner mercenary organization, which UK defense experts have called the most significant challenge to the Kremlin in recent memory, has been discussed with Western partners, According to UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who acknowledged that he had done so. On Saturday afternoon, Mr. Sunak called with the leaders of the United States, France, and Germany to discuss the situation in Russia and reiterate their continuing support for Ukrainian sovereignty, according to Downing Street. A top Kremlin official had previously issued a warning that the Wagner Group's successful uprising would result in the mercenaries gaining access to Russia's sizable nuclear weapons and pose an existential danger to the whole globe. Dmitry Medvedev, 
the Vice President of the Security Council of Russia, which is presided over by President Vladimir Putin, stated in statements reported by Russian news agencies that the history of mankind has not yet seen the largest arsenal of nuclear weapons under control by bandits. The globe will be on the verge of extinction as a result of this catastrophe, which will not be contained inside the borders of just one nation. We won't accept such a turn of events, he continued. Since Russia dispatched soldiers into Ukraine, Medvedev has repeatedly employed tough language in an effort to deter the West from supplying further weaponry to Kiev. He routinely reminds the West of Russia's nuclear arsenal. The insurrection, according to Medvedev, was a well-planned operation aimed at seizing power in the country. He said that it may have included some former members of top Russian military groups as well as foreign players. On Saturday, as the mutinous mercenaries advanced on Moscow, US, President Joe Biden called with the leaders of France, Germany, and the United Kingdom. The leaders talked about the state of affairs in Russia. According to a readout, they reaffirmed their steadfast support for Ukraine. The leaders affirmed their unshakable support for Ukraine, the White House statement continued. Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris were informed on the Russian problem by their national security team on Saturday morning, according to a White House official, and they will continue to be updated throughout the day. It follows a raid on the Wagner unit's headquarters in St. Petersburg by pro-Putin troops earlier today after Prigogine took control of Rostov-on-Don's Southern Defense Command, a key player in the invasion of Ukraine. The Russian Security Service reported finding $47 million in cash on the property, which according to Prigogine is for his men's wages and other costs. Putin encouraged those engaged to end any violent opposition, describing the group's activities as equivalent to armed mutiny. Putin was said to have departed Moscow on Saturday afternoon, despite Kremlin officials' denials and claims to the contrary. According to real-time flight data, a presidential aircraft connected to Vladimir Putin made a northward journey from Moscow to Tver before turning off its transponder. Other corporate aircraft were spotted departing the city in the direction of St. Petersburg, with prominent Putin supporters supposedly making their way to Turkey. Prior to Sunday night's declaration of war against Moscow's military leadership, Prigogine, a former confidant of Vladimir Putin, said in a video that the top senior officer in the command post had evacuated as soon as he knew that Wagner soldiers were around. According to a Russian security source, military installations in Voronezh, which is located roughly 500 kilometers 310 miles south of Moscow, have also been taken over by Wagner fighters. In the city, a major oil store caught fire, considered to be a Russian military assault against Wagner forces. This is noteworthy because it indicates where Rostov and Moscow split in half. In response to an armed uprising by the Wagner mercenary organization, the governor of Russia's Voronezh province warned on Saturday that the army was implementing necessary military measures in the area. Also said to have Wagner forces nearby are the southern cities of Krasnodar and Volgograd, however this has not been confirmed. Wagner columns have only been discovered as near to Moscow as the Lipitsk area. Governor Igor Artamanov said on Telegram that hardware of the Wagner mercenary group is moving across the territory of the Lipitsk region.
I'd like to warn everyone that it is strongly advised against inhabitants leaving their homes or travelling by any means. He didn't specify the precise location in the area where the Wagner warriors were spotted. Prigogine declared that he had 25,000 soldiers under his command and that he would overthrow Shoigu, the head of the Russian military, in an armed uprising. He urged the army to show no opposition, saying that this was not a military coup, but a march of justice. Government representatives had ordered the residents to stay inside, but several were seen outside watching what was occurring and even live streaming it on their mobile devices.